and welcome to Engine Adventures, part two of the midsize truck shootout. This is the hill that these trucks are trying to conquer. And I drive the hardest line, which depending on when the truck would, was tested, may or may not be quite this flexy. So you can see, I mean, the top of this tire is about even with the bottom of that tire, 32 inches over that, you know, 105 inch wheelbase there or whatever. Uh, it's about a 22 to 25 degree angle, depending on the length of the truck and all that. So anyway, you can see how much these trucks need to flex or need to transfer power to the wheels with traction to get up this hill. And again, I take the hard line, so I can do easier if I bring the vehicle this way a little bit, straddle the holes. I can make it up there pretty easy, but in our testing, we want to push the vehicle to its limits. So that's what we're doing here today. In part one, we cover the high speed rough road capabilities of these vehicles. In part two, we're covering how well they can transfer power to the wheels with traction as they climb a steep hill, often lifting a wheel off the ground. In part three, we will cover ground clearance, approach, breakover, departure angles, and underbody protection. Overall, here are the final scores. Let's go ahead and cover the steep hill section. Remember that this is how these vehicles performed on this day, or rather the day they were tested, in the weather conditions they were tested in, the road conditions they were tested in. Things are gonna vary a little bit. Vehicles will perform differently over different courses. Take it for what it is, this is my opinion. Don't get all upset about it. It's just what it is, have fun, enjoy it. All of the footage in this video comes from the full videos of each of these vehicles. Links to each of those is down below in the description. So if there's a vehicle you're particularly interested in, you can go down, click that link and see the whole video of the off-road testing for that vehicle. So the left and right views were shot at different times, so they're not gonna line up perfectly, but it gives you an idea of what each side is doing. So as you can see here, it took a lot of throttle to do it, but it was able to make it up this hill and with two wheels basically in the air. Other vehicles haven't been able to do this and the older generation of the same system was unable to do this. So same thing as before with the snow mode, the throttle is just less sensitive and it required me to do full throttle, but the other modes required full throttle too. This one just took a little bit longer to get up to speed. In mud mode, it seemed like the throttle was even more sensitive than normal mode and it took less effort or less throttle input in order to make it up the hill. It felt like sand mode allowed for more wheel spin, but the difference was negligible and I don't know if these results are conclusive. On their own, the clutches in the rear differential don't apply enough pressure to fully lock the differential together. So you can see here without traction control on, the wheels just spin. And this is bad for the clutches as well because it causes a lot more friction in there, caused them to heat up more, and it did overheat the system. You can see the traction control light flashes there. Even with it off, you get that traction control light flashing. And there you go. Stop driving when safe, the all-wheel drive mode it's too hot. So we'll go down, let it cool off. This is in four-wheel drive high with traction control on. So I just shifted in four-wheel drive and didn't hit any other buttons. And again, the traction control is cutting power so much that it's just not able to make the climb. In four-wheel drive high with the traction control off, it did do a little bit better than it did with traction control on. 
but it still struggled to climb the hill. I wasn't able to make it. I probably could have made it with some momentum, maybe a little bit harder on the throttle, which I did for my second try, and I was able to make it on my second try filming from the other angle. Moving on to four-wheel drive low, the traction control and electronic stability control are automatically disabled, so we don't have to worry about those. And in this mode, it seems to be the most aggressive with the brake lock differential as well. It transfers power side to side really well, it makes the climb actually really pretty easily. And even though the rear locker is not engaged, it doesn't have a problem making it up this hill. And obviously the mode with the most traction is going to be four-wheel drive low with the rear differential lock. Again, makes the climb no problem. And I'm not sure if the brake lock differential engaged there or not. I think it still works, but with three wheels locked together, it's not likely you're going to need it very much. All right, so we have the diff lock on, four-wheel drive low. When the diff lock's on, the ABS light comes on, but it still does the brake lock differential, which is cool. Four-wheel drive low automatically turns off traction control off, and I'm just going to, no feet, just go down this hill. First gear. Okay, so this is first gear holding the truck back, I'm going about three miles an hour. This is one of the better vehicles we've done on this hill. The only thing that's beat it, I believe, is the manual transmission. So that's pretty good. It also has a downhill assist can hit that, just leave it in drive, let the brakes off, and it goes about one mile an hour. And it does a great job as well. So, I mean, either way, but I really like that the gearing is that low. This is using the brakes, whereas just dropping it into first gear is an easy thing to do and let the downhill assist do it. And this truck does like climbing that hill and four wheel drive low. I barely even have to push on the gas, which is pretty cool too. So it definitely has pretty solid low end there. So we can see here in four wheel drive high in normal mode, the truck kind of struggles and makes its way through this with a lot of effort. I do go as slow as I possibly can. So when I do have good traction, I let off the throttle. So the truck kind of slowly goes up the hill but it is able just to get by and make it up this even on the hard line. In mud and ruts mode, it does allow for more wheel spin and cuts the throttle less than in grass, gravel, and snow mode, but it still transfers power side to side pretty well. With traction control off, it still transfers power side to side really well, and this was actually one of the best modes for climbing the hill. It was a little surprising, but Quite a capable vehicle with the traction control off. With trail control on, basically I'm not touching the gas or the brake, and the truck does a good job of transferring power side to side. You can see of all the modes tested so far, this one tears up the hill the least, but there are a few scary points where it starts to roll backwards or just does some weird things, but ultimately the trail control performed very well. In four-wheel drive low, it automatically disables traction control, and surprisingly, it seemed to struggle more in four-wheel drive low than it did in four-wheel drive high. I'm not sure why this is. It did take a lot of right foot, a little bit more throttle than I expected. Ultimately, it was able to make it up the hill, but this took a lot of work. As expected, in four-wheel drive low with the rear diff locked, it really does make this climb a breeze. The amount of traction there is just incredible. There is a slight amount of sliding side to side with the rear diff locked, but ultimately very capable in this mode. Here we are in four-wheel drive low with trail control on, and I want to be clear that every time I'm using trail control, I have the rear differential lock disengaged, so it's an open rear differential. This tests the system a lot more than if I had the rear diff locked. So you might see a little bit more wheel spin here, but ultimately 
with trail control on, it does a really good job of transferring power to the wheels that have traction and braking the wheels that are in the air or wheels without traction. So we're just in four high normal mode. And I hope you can hear that brake ABS system pulsating. So, rear diff lock, press it and hold, now it's on, it's probably going to, there we go, engage, and we're hung up, that's surprising, so we'll do just a tiny bump to make that, wow. Try a different line, I guess. I don't know if I'm high centering. I must have just been high centering, but I couldn't feel it underneath at all. Oh, there we go. Easy enough with the rear diff locked. Now, obviously, choosing the line is the biggest thing. And I did go for the hardest line initially, which is why I had so many problems there. Okay, this gets up to about 20, 23 degrees or so. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and shift over here. Four drive low, rear diff locked. Going as slow as I can. We're at uh, only 20 degrees on this one. And it should bubble off there. So there you have it. So while there's definitely a lot less noise in here than Toyota's system, it does seem to be rolling backwards occasionally, and just doing weird things just because it's not as aggressive as a Toyota system is. So I am in that same hole. Okay, call it quits there. It's gonna damage the vehicle. So it's in trail control, there it goes. And we'll take the slightly easier line again. Still very hard line, still articulates enough to get the wheels off the ground. The left front and right rear. Okay. So, trail control doing it all on its own. There you have it. Okay. In other vehicles, I'd be worried about trying to drive straight into this hill but not in the Gladiator. The approach angle is extremely good on this thing and that really is no problem at all. Here we are, four wheel drive high. I'm just gonna lock it in the first gear and nothing else has been done. So sway bar is connected. The off-road plus mode has not been engaged or anything. Traction control still on, whatever. We're just shifting into four wheel drive and going for a little drive here. And one thing is you can hear the roof creak as you articulate in this thing. So there we go. Really spinning. Pedals on the floor now are at 2000 RPM. And is it gonna figure it out? It figures it out. From here, the rest of the climb is easy. So it took a little effort. We are destroying this hill, but what I really want to test now is when I hit that off-road plus button, 
What's it gonna do? Okay, off-road plus. Go ahead and shift back into drive. I heard the fan kick on, but our temps are okay. So off-road plus, and it shows the Jeep in sand there. So even more wheel spin, we're starting to slide off course. I'm, rather than risk anything, we're just gonna hit four low and off-road plus. Let's see what it does. Let's turn that back off. There we go, off-road plus. There you go, so it kind of shows a rock mode now. And let's see if this will get us back on course. A little bit of throttle. I can hear the ABS and feel the ABS working hard. Go ahead and lock it up just for demonstration purposes. And it's locked. Axle lock front and rear. Go ahead and get the angle gauge going. Next vehicle I bring out here, Dodge Durango next week. I'm bringing a shovel and a pick most likely. But with both axles locked, right there, we've got two wheels in the air and no problem. Well, at least one wheel in the air. Off the brake. I'll put the crawl ratio up on the screen. We are about three to four miles an hour. Not too bad. This thing has a 342 axle ratio and that's not great for off-roading. This thing is a high-speed off-roader, but really not too bad. So locking the rear, which I didn't show you on here. Um, I think you can probably see that. And when I flip it off, it goes away. So this is probably your best screen actually to tell you what four wheel drive position you're in because there's no real good lights or anything. Actually going to drop it down into two wheel drive. <laughs> as soon as I did that, it stopped moving. Yep, two wheel drive is a no go, and that's I can feel both wheels spinning even without the rear diff locked. Now we're in four wheel drive auto again. So this hill is a four wheel drive auto hill at the least. I do have track control off. Let's turn that back on. There we go. And let's see what we can do. There's a lot of articulation in this truck. I'm surprised that, there we go, I made it that far. You can see which wheels are spinning. I am full throttle, so I'm not gonna do it there. So let's go ahead and turn traction control off. And we're just gonna hit it once, not hold it down. So you can see. Track controls off. And it gave me an extra 500 RPM, but that extra 500 RPM is all it needed to make this. Bouncing. Oh, I hate bouncing. We'll try that one more time. That's how you break stuff. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not happening there. We have plenty of tools in our arsenal. Rear diff locked. And these things, the diffs on this lock really fast. Hit the button and they're locked. It seems to be very consistent. And I'm able to just crawl right up this. Apparently in four wheel drive below, there is no off-road mode. Just the regular, so we're just gonna lock everything. That ding again, the ABS. And this thing is ridiculous, so I was just gonna crawl right up it with both axles locked, as you would expect. I made a little slippage there. Not slippage, the rear end slid into a hole. This truck does have downhill assist right here. 
not gonna use it. This is purely a gearing test and somewhere throughout this test, I will put the crawl ratio up on the screen. I'm still on the brake right here. I don't wanna end up in the bushes. There we go, still on the brake. I'm gonna get past this worst hole, which is right now with the front, now with both. There we are, okay. And here we go, no feet. Yeah, I mean, we're hanging out four miles an hour. Not bad, not the best. I don't know if you can see that, four miles an hour. Uh, really not too bad at all, but I'm in four wheel drive auto traction control all that stuff's on it's just if you were driving just flip that dial over to four-wheel drive auto and I'm imagining that this is gonna do it because G80 rear locker and we're taking the hardest line all the way up uh, the brakes killed me there felt G80 lock sliding the rear end so now if I can keep pressure on that G80 I should to take that sentence back. Okay, one more try and four-wheel drive low if we can get it to shift. Huh. The engine stalled. I was in neutral when that happened. Very, very odd. Whoa. I am impressed that that made that big of a difference in four-wheel drive low. I was not expecting that. Okay, we're in the deepest hole here. This be a little bit tough, but we'll be all right. There we go, first big hole. You can see traction control is on and flashing. I'm full throttle, 1500 RPM. Not gonna happen. Traction control off right here. So even with traction control off, it will allow the active brake limited slip system to work. So now I can drive it higher. Oh, it almost made it. I'm full throttle, it's still kind of cutting it. Interesting, okay. I was not expecting that result. We're gonna hit neutral, shift into four low. And this one, some of them you have to be moving. This one seems to shift into four low really well when you're at a complete stop, holding your foot on the brake. And traction control is automatically off. So I'm pushing it down here, nothing's happening up here. When you're in four low, traction control is automatically off. I'm in neutral, so I'm not gonna go anywhere. And now we'll just ease into it. I can hear the ABS and there you go. So the Nissan has done a really good job with tuning the ABLS system to be not very aggressive in four wheel drive high and to be very aggressive in four wheel drive low or quite aggressive. I would say, yeah, it's about equivalent to Toyota's crawl control on its most aggressive setting, so. We still don't have the rear locked. And yeah, making these climbs fairly easy. Just keep consistent throttle between 1500 and 2000 RPM, and it will transfer the power where it needs to be. I'll be sure and post the crawl ratio up on the screen because I am not sure what that is off the top of my head. If I recall correctly, the Frontier is one of the better ones on the market for crawl ratio. Okay, downhill, uh, let's just do first gear. So over, we're in manual first gear there, and I'm gonna hold the brake here at first. Was not expecting that to rub. Okay, still on the brake. We'll get a good line right here in just a second. I'm still on the brake manually. And 
right after this dip. There we go. Okay, so now this is all engine braking. My feet are not on the pedals. Excellent. We are one, two miles an hour. This is honestly one of the best ones I've had going down this hill. I'm very impressed with this. We do have a bit of a bump right here. Let's see if we can keep front and rear from dragging. Yeah, holy cow. So I'm very impressed with the engine braking going down that hill. I remember it being really good from before. Not quite that good. All right, let's see how far we can get on this battery. We are in four wheel drive high and that's it. So if you jumped in, well, jumped in and started it and put it in four wheel drive high, that's how it would be right now. And we'll take the rough line. Not that there's an easy one, but there we go. Full throttle. Surprised that it's struggling that much, okay. MTS says shift to four low. I'm gonna cycle through these. Yeah, so it's shift to four low for all of them. We'll hit crawl control and it'll say the same thing. Yep, shift to four low. Okay, neutral, four low. Went in really quick, track off, and hit drive. So this is just four low. And it's just spinning, traction control is off. And if I hit the button, it doesn't change anything up here. So we'll go ahead and hit multi-terrain select. And we're gonna go with the mud and sand first. Okay, that's just to get a feel. I could have made it out of that. Now we're gonna go all the way to the opposite end on rock mode. I'm turning the dial up here. I don't know how well that's showing up. So now you can hear how much more aggressive it is, not spinning the wheels. Jeez. Seems to be really struggling here. I was not expecting this. Let's grab that. So we're 10 degrees sideways and about 15 degrees up. So I'm gonna get just a tiny start. I don't know if, what was going on there. There we go. Huh. I must have nailed that hole just right for this thing to be struggling that much. And I guess I did kind of dig in so in rock mode, of course, and this is all with the rear diff unlocked. It's doing all right, but not as good as I would have expected. Oddly enough, there we go. Part of that's my driving. I am pushing this thing kind of to the limits. So I turned off multi-terrain select there. That was the beep you heard. We're gonna hit, well, actually we're just gonna do first gear four low. So, get lined up here first, sorry. Whoa. Okay. We're in S1, four wheel drive low, rear diff's not locked. We're just gonna roll down this and see how we do. Uh, let me get the cameras. This is a longer truck than the Frontier that we had last week, but not too bad. I need to throw my backpack down on the floor right here. Okay, I'm still on the brake. Just so you know, this is not engine braking. Okay, off the brake now. Not bad, not as good as the Frontier. And especially here, we're really picking up. I had to get back on the brake. I don't wanna be diving off this too fast and smashing the front end. So let's go ahead and get, cause this gets pretty nasty right here. Um, I'm still on the brake. I'm gonna be on the brakes for a little bit of this uh, crawl ratio check, but. Um, it's only showing 17, 18, 19, 
20. Let's see if we can go above the, oh, there we go, 21. 22, so pretty steep. Got up to 22 degrees. If I drop into this hole, it might even go higher. I'm a little bit to the side of the hole, but add some pitch to it. Anyway, and that's, that shows here as well. So this other screen doesn't give you much additional information, but it does add some. And let's go here. Okay, off the gas, off the brake, and not bad. Four-wheel drive low, first gear. I will put the crawl ratio up on the screen. I don't know it right now because I didn't look up the first gear ratio. Oh, I don't know why it's taking off now. Like it just, it chose to do that on its own. Like it revved up the engine. I don't know what it's doing. So now that's normal. I had to push on the brake to bring it back down. I don't know what that was about. Um, doing its own thing I guess so let's go ahead and do another one here this time we're gonna go up in four-wheel drive low going as slow as we can and yeah let's hit the terrain mode why not so I mean play around with the different drive modes if it's your truck your tr terrain whatever you're on mess around with the drive mode see what's best for you um, in this case I'm just gonna go slow and we're gonna do the terrain mode. And I'm my goal here is to go as slow as I can. So, I mean, we're not even on the hard part yet. So let's get up to the hard part and then I'll go as slow as I can. So right here. And you can see my the line of my wheels coming down. Okay, right here we should start getting in the right, well. This, the length of this truck the wheelbase must be perfect, so it was avoiding that first one. Okay. So in the front wheel spin. It's not showing in the rear. Oh, there it goes. So it's showing that one in the air and that one in the air. Um, we're going to lock the G80 here if it doesn't do it. There it goes. Lock the G80 and up it goes. Let's take a look at the scoring, and to be honest, not a single one of these trucks did bad. Coming in at 10th place is the 2020 Honda Ridgeline. With the dual clutch rear differential, it made this climb, and it didn't really struggle all that much. I mean, there was a little bit of effort involved, but it did quite well, especially for what it's designed for. Coming in at 9th place is the 2023 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. It really is quite capable off-road, it's just in this company it's hard to get a high ranking and the others outperform the Colorado. Coming in at number 8 is the 2022 GMC Canyon AT4 and really it probably didn't perform as well as the Trail Boss but the way my spreadsheets work out in the numbers because of this slightly better crawl ratio it was able to sneak in just above the Trail Boss. Coming in in 7th place is the 2023 Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. It did perform quite well. Again, this is excellent company to be in. The crawl ratio hurt it quite a bit, but other than that, it really is very capable. Tying for fifth place, we have the 2020 and 2023 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. Similar across the board, even though there's a body change and a little bit of other updates for the 2023 versus the 2020, overall the mechanicals are very similar and thus similar scores. Tying for third place, we have the 2020 Ranger FX4 and 2021 Ranger Tremor. They have the same mechanicals, same electronic systems as well. And this test doesn't really show the differences with the lift and tires you get on the Tremor. Therefore, they come out even. Coming in at number two is the 2022 Chevy Colorado ZR2. With the locking front and rear differentials, it makes this climb no problem at all. It doesn't have a great crawl ratio, which hurts it, but overall did very well. It comes as no surprise that the 2021 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon takes the top spot. With front and rear locking differentials, a disconnecting front anti-sway bar, a really good crawl ratio of 77.2 to 1, and an excellent brake-based limited slip system, the Jeep was going to take this from the start. 
Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out part one for the high speed. Part two, obviously, is this one with the steep hill climb. And part three, where we go over all the dimensions, including underbody protection, and we discuss the final results on why the Gladiator and ZR2 Colorado tied for the win. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications, give me a thumbs up, and comment down below. If you didn't enjoy it, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day.